When a young couple purchases a neighborhood haunt, they get much more than they bargained for. There was so much activity, and there seemed to be so many entities in one location. Ghostly pranks quickly turn aggressive, threatening the safety and sanity of everyone who comes in the front door. We were dealing with something much bigger than ourselves. No! It was getting more personal, it was getting more dangerous. I was truly scared at that point. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. In 2007, Jason Ryder surprises his wife, Lynn, with an unexpected gift. Okay, open them. What? It's Maury's. We are the new owners of Maury's. Maury's is a popular Meriden, Connecticut restaurant. Oh my God. So Maury's was basically the place that everyone has a story about in Meriden, because that is the place we all grew up. A lot of people uh, from the town, they would go there. So it was almost like a cheers. What are you doing? <laughs> Jason and Lynn frequented Maury's on dates and dreamed they would one day own the place. I kind of got blindsided by the purchase of Maury's. I didn't know. Jason's pretty good about that kind of stuff. After three months of renovations, Lynn and Jason renamed the bar Riders. Lynn's father, Barry, is recruited to help. Lynn is a people person. If she has people around her, she's totally happy. Both Lynn and Jason quickly discover that running a restaurant and a bar is more challenging than they ever imagined. Lynn, we are on our last bottle of tequila, and the ice machine is on the fritz again. We were up there seven days a week. Some days it was 15, 16 hours a day. We were still trying to learn the business. Also, we need to order more shot glasses. I just ordered new ones last week. Where'd they go? I don't know. I usually had about 48 shot glasses. As the weeks went on, I was down to like two shot glasses. And then I would buy 24 more. And a couple days later, I'd be down to five shot glasses. This is getting expensive. So I questioned my staff as to, are you breaking them? Are you throwing them out? Are people stealing them? The shot glasses are not the only items disappearing in the bar. Lynn's keys frequently go missing. We would spend sometimes almost up to an hour looking for keys. They would go missing pretty much every day for a while. In the beginning, I thought I was losing my mind. And then it started to happen more frequently. So I started questioning who's doing it. Lynn often comes in early in the morning to catch up on paperwork. It's the only quiet time she has before opening the restaurant for the day. Up until now, she's never been disturbed. Dad? Jason, is that you? I heard my name, and not just my name, I heard Lynn Murray, which is my full name. What? Dad, Jason, what? What do you guys want? I'm swamped here. It sounded like it was coming from out in the restaurant, like my husband or my dad was yelling for me. I wasn't really pleased that I had to get up because I was extremely busy. Dad? 
Jason? I looked around, and the building was empty. And the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I told Jason that I felt like I was being watched. He basically just said, listen, you're tired. You work a lot of hours. Jason's assurance that nothing strange is going on does not make Lynn feel better. When something inside me tells me that I need to kind of be on alert, there's usually a reason. Several days later, it's Super Bowl Sunday, and Lynn prepares for a party at the restaurant. Suddenly, Lynn feels a tap on her shoulder. And then another. The second tap was harder. It was hard enough that my attention needed to be caught. Marcy? Marcy, you there? Lynn, do you need help? You got it? Were you just in the basement? No, Lynn, I just got here. I need to get back upstairs. Things moving or, or disappearing, that's one thing. For something to be able to come up and touch you, I mean, it's scary. Over the next few weeks, Lynn continues to have strange experiences in the restaurant. But each time she tries to talk about it with her family, they laugh it off. Everybody was teasing me at that point. Like, oh, what's the matter? Lynn, did your ghost do it? So it was a big joke. I mean, it was a constant joke. Well, we joked around a lot because we just thought this was just, you know, it was a way to ease attention. You leaving? Mm-hmm. I need to go to the post office. I'll lock up. OK. I had beer bottles all over the place. They were on the floor, they were moved around. I'm the only one in the bar. The bar is locked. I cannot fathom how this could have happened. There's no logical explanation. I get very, very uneasy because I can't figure this out. The next day, Barry stocks the beer cooler before opening. He thinks he's alone. Not funny! Hey, come on! Open the door! Jason! Open the door! I was afraid. If you've ever been in combat, if you've ever had somebody literally trying to kill you, that's the feeling you get. And that's the exact feeling I had. Open the door! Come on, open the door! Seriously, come on! Hey, come on! Open the door! Barry Eichenauer is working alone in his daughter's bar when someone or something locks him in the beer cooler. I caught my breath, and now I had to get my wits about me. I had to figure out what was going on. Dad! Yeah? Are you okay? I heard someone yelling. I'm okay now. The look on his face alone told me that he was a little scared. He was never going to admit it to me. I've been in that cooler a million times. It's never locked on me. The, the, the door can't even close by itself. This was what really started me to get into her corner. 
and say, look, you've got to figure out what's going on. Lynn fears there is something supernatural lurking in the shadows of her restaurant. Her mother convinces her that a psychic may see what Lynn cannot. Do you own a bar? Yes. I sense two mischievous entities at your restaurant. She said to me, you have two spirits. And they weren't really happy with some of the things I was doing. She told me that they had been there for many, many years. And instead of going into a power struggle with them, I needed to go back to the restaurant and kind of just make peace with the fact that they were there. They've taken several items and hidden them in the basement. And she described it with the dirt cellar. She told me exactly what corner and what box to look behind. She says, you'll find them. My parents had to drop me off at the restaurant. I immediately ran downstairs and started digging through exactly where she told me to go. The very moment that I pulled back the last box and found shot glasses, I kind of froze. I did freeze and was like, whoa, okay. What are you doing back here? Jason. I found the shot glasses exactly where the psychic said they would be. Anyone could have brought those glasses down here. It proves nothing. <sighs> don't say anything to the employees. I don't want them thinking they work for a crazy person. I didn't want my wife to pretty much be telling people about this, because I don't want them to think that she was a nutcase, you know, seeing this or seeing that. I knew I wasn't crazy at that point, but that's when you really got to start going, OK, wait, we're dealing with something, you know? And you don't know what's going to happen. A week later, Lynn hires Tito Corciato to be a bouncer and help out around the bar. She doesn't tell him about the strange occurrences. When I first started working at Riders, I didn't have any weird feelings towards the bar. I've never heard any stories about anything. Dad, would you run down to the basement, pick up a couple of more boxes of martini glasses for me? Oh, I'll get them. Thanks, Tito. You could feel the change of temperature. It was very cold down there. Who's there? Jason? Is that you? What the? Register tape was thrown at me. <laughs> Good try, Jason. I thought it was Jay playing around with me, because Jay loves to play jokes. So I thought it was Jay. That same evening, Tito helps with cleanup after closing. To actually see pots flying off on their own and there's no one back there, that was the scariest moment. That made me believe that there were actually some supernatural activities going on at Riders. Later that night. Yeah, what is it? OK, uh, I'll meet the police there in a few minutes. The alarm company again? Third time this week. Damn, I swear. This particular time, the police didn't show up, so I figured somebody's breaking into the building. I 
see like three black shadows. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Jason has no idea what danger is just behind the door. After the alarm goes off in the restaurant, Jason Ryder believes intruders have broken in. I figure I had to get into a fight, and so I'm getting myself all pumped up, you know, all juiced up and everything else. I kick open the door, nobody's there. I go home, an hour later, the alarm goes off again. Alarm went off like five times that night. As the nightly bar scene at Riders picks up, Lynn and Jason's secret grows even more difficult to keep. Come. <laughs> what the? The cue ball came up in the air and jumped over all the other balls and just hit the table. Listen, I didn't touch it. That is not OK. Guys, guys, I am so sorry. We are going to have to have this table checked to make sure that it's level. We chalked it up to the floors being on level that night or something. I didn't want to scare people. OK, let's get a beer. But the customers know what they saw. Later that same evening, a woman is in the ladies' restroom alone. if she was okay and she couldn't talk to me at that point she specifically said to me i do not believe in heaven and i do not believe in hell but i do not even know how to tell you what i just saw you need to see something she then asked me to please go into my bathroom and look at the wall i'm sorry i don't know what to say I was starting to feel hopeless. There were more and more people coming forward to me. And the more that people came forward to me, the more standoffish I was. Because not only could I not explain it to them, but I couldn't do anything to fix it. The paranormal pranks at Riders are no longer harmless. People are scared. Lynn and Jason are not sure how to solve the problem. They continue to run the restaurant as if nothing happened. I think my husband was frustrated because Jay is a fixer, and that's what he does. And he couldn't fix this. And I think that he didn't want to admit to me that he couldn't protect us. And I think that bothered him. Jason continues to do what he does best, fix whatever is broken. On a 90-degree summer day, Jason is in the basement repairing a leaky pipe. As soon as I went in there, it was like just cold, dry air, like death. 
I could see the smoke coming from my breath, and it was definitely not a, a cold day. see it will say shadows or I think I see somebody right there next to me or like 10 feet away and I would look they wouldn't be there I knew I really saw something despite the tension Lynn continues to go through the motions of her routine but this morning will be unlike any other Lynn Marie It was almost as if you couldn't breathe. There was really nowhere for me to go at that point because I was in the back corner of the building and I was alone. It scared me. It's one thing to know that there's a presence. It's another thing to know that they know you're there. <laughs> the fact that it knew my name and not just my first name it bothered me. That was something personal. Lynn reaches out to a friend for help. Clairvoyant and medium Karen Hollis. Lynn had a real sense that I wouldn't lead her astray. If she needed some type of therapy, I was going to send her to the right person. And if she needed the right paranormal investigative group, I would also be able to point her in the right direction. Karen arrives and takes a look around the entire restaurant, including the basement. My first feeling about it was, it just felt heavy. The air felt heavy. When we had walked in, the, the room was ice cold. I got a sense of, why are you here? The minute I walked into the bar. Yep, this place is haunted. We've got something here. It's been my experience that Mirrors, specifically antique mirrors, because they reflect back to us our own perceptions on reality, create doorways to other dimensions. And I thought to myself, oh yeah, that's the portal. That's where they're coming through. A portal is a doorway that can allow something from a different dimension to come into our particular plane of existence. Lynn. Karen recommends Lynn get rid of the mirror and that she contact a paranormal investigation team Karen works with. A week later, Karen and the ghosts of New England Research Society arrive after closing to investigate. Kurt Knapp runs the team. I was very excited to get an investigation underway there. At the same time, I was a little bit skeptical because it just seemed to be too much going on there for any one place. Before arriving, Kurt Knapp researches Ryder's history. We always try to look at the place from a historic perspective to see what happened there. Because in New England, there are so many layers of history. He learns Ryder's was originally two residences built in the 1800s, later joined together to become a feed store, paint store, 
and finally Maury's before Lynn and Jason took over. Town lore claims two deaths resulted from a fire in 1976. Could these be the ghosts haunting the bar? Kurt approaches his investigations with an open mind. We try to approach each investigation with a scientific method and also a psychic method. We don't discount the client's claims, but we take them with a grain of salt, realizing that most clients are not trained observers. You got everything under control. Okay. I'll lock up. Okay, thank you. Joe and Karen, I want you to go into the basement. Mike, you and I are going to go to the kitchen. There was a heaviness in the air. And the minute I turned the corner, I got a sense of an entity that was over my left shoulder. I know you're here. I can feel it. Please, come forward. heard in real time, I'm so weak. When I asked telepathically, in what way are you weak? Are, is it emotionally or physically? It answered both. And it was shocking. I heard it. We marked it disembodied voice. I knew at that point we had a very haunted bar. Karen senses several more spirits, but they will not communicate with her. I felt the presence of at least two separate entities. But many times when you're investigating a haunting, it feels like a game of hide and go seek. The energy moves, moves away from you. So it doesn't want to let you know that it's actually there. Investigators set up a laser grid in the basement to detect motion. We thought we'd do an impromptu EVP session in the dirt floor part of the cellar. I felt something tap me on the back of the head. I have movement in the grid. Kurt Knapp and the ghosts of New England Research Society are looking for verifiable proof that Riders is haunted. I have movement in the grid. Ah! Suddenly, an investigator is in distress. What's wrong? What happened? I don't know what it was. He said it was like something just rushed right through me. He used the comparison of like throwing a handful of sand through a screen door. I think that it was trying to show us its power, that it could do things like this and we couldn't do anything about it. We were seeing and hearing these things for ourselves and there was absolutely no doubt in our mind that there was some serious paranormal activity happening in Riders. That night, Karen decides to do a clearing to communicate with spirits in the building and attempt to cross them over. We're gonna use the tarot cards. The tarot cards provide Karen with an opportunity to communicate with the spirit through symbolism, rather than trying to capture its voice again on a digital recorder. Can you tell us who you are? Why you're here? I immediately got the Emperor card, which would indicate a male energy. When I asked, how did you die? It gave me the hanged man, that he had hanged himself. Lynn is astonished. There was one patron who talked to my husband and us about when he was a little boy, they used to work there. And he had told us that there was um, someone who had died by hanging. And when I asked, why do I feel that you are sad in some way, he gave me the Three of Swords that he was divorced, separated, heartbroken, that there had been an issue. Do you want to leave? 
And when I asked him, do you want to leave, he gave me the sun card, yes. OK, thank you. Now, with your permission, I'm going to create a light. And I want you to walk into it. Do you understand? He says he wants to rest. He indicated to me that, yes, he would be willing to take the chance to walk into it. I created the beam of light, and then he just disappeared. He's gone. We had released one of the more frustrating entities. But given that the building has so much history, it certainly has more work. Karen believes at least one more entity remains in the building, but does not sense anything sinister. I can't say for sure that there aren't entities or an entity at Riders that wishes no one harm. I can say that we didn't receive any indication that Lynn would be in any danger. She did explain to me that there still could be other spirits that have not come forward yet. We're just going to have to wait and see. For the next three days, Riders feels like a normal place of business again. There are no paranormal incidents, but are the entities really gone? Late one night, Lynn and a bartender are closing the restaurant. Marcy, I think we had a really good night tonight. We did. We had a great night. As soon as that had happened, the feeling just came back. Jason? I just saw Jason in the mirror. Marcy, Jason's at home. He hasn't been here all evening. No, I just saw him. I swear I did. The feeling just came back. You don't really say anything to each other at that point, but we knew. We knew. <laughs> Despite the indication there are active spirits in her restaurant again, Lynn is determined to go on with life as normal. I had invited a couple of my girlfriends over. And because I worked so many hours, we were in the back. Let's talk about her new job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm starting next week. Yeah. We'll see. I'm ready to quit before I start. No. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, no. You can do it. You, I know you. I you know, can do anything. You can do it. It's so nerve wracking. But it's exciting, it's right? It, no, it's, it's really good. exciting. It's really exciting. New opportunities and everything. Yeah. We'll see. Good, good, good. <laughs> Lynn, what are you doing? Lynn, what's, Lynn, talk to us. Lynn, Lynn, what are you? Okay, stop. Lynn, should we call an ambulance? I don't know. What's going on? Oh my god, what? It was not okay. That was like the last piece of protection I had, or felt I had was to know that I had St. Michael watching over me. Lynn believes whatever is now haunting riders is more aggressive than the spirits that plagued her restaurant before the clearing. At that point, I knew that the spirit that was crossed had nothing to do with what was really going on at Riders. We were dealing with something much bigger than ourselves. Over the next few days, Lynn notices another disturbing change at her restaurant. The building changed. It changed to oppressive and negative and a feeling of danger. Hey, can I get my beer? Lynn often bartends in the afternoon until the evening shift arrives. Hey, can I get a couple more beers over here? We need two over here. I've been waiting for my drink forever. This afternoon is unusually busy. The service is horrible here. She doesn't know what she's doing. The mortgage is so far behind. I hope we don't lose the house. I don't like this drink. I hate my hair. My drink tastes terrible. My kids are getting bullied constantly. She's so slow. I don't even know why they keep her around. Lynn believes she's hearing everyone's thoughts. I started hearing people talking. They truly weren't speaking. In my mind, they were speaking. She's so slow. I don't even know why they keep her around. The service is horrible here. You can't protect your children. I don't like this drink. The drink tastes terrible. She doesn't know what she's doing. 
My kids are getting bullied constantly. She's so slow, and I don't even know why they keep her around. For Lynn Ryder, an afternoon at work suddenly takes a dark turn. I was hearing people's thoughts directed at me. It was as if I was being attacked by 57 people. I was just hearing nasty, negative things about me. You can't protect your children. I don't like this drink. The drink tastes terrible. Your business is going under. At that point, I knew I had had it. I had to call my, my family to come in. Lynn? Lenny? What's wrong? What's going on? Nobody can see you like this. This is crazy. It would be embarrassing. It would be bad for the company. Nobody is going to the hospital. Nobody's going to the hospital. Lynn, I, I didn't say anything. You don't have to say anything. I can hear you. I can hear your thoughts. I was in a full out breakdown in my office that night. My mind shut down and my body shut down and I, I truly lost it all in one night. Jason convinces Lynn to take a break and stay away from the restaurant for a few days. I was worried about her. She's like my partner. She's part of business. She's my partner in life. She's the mother of my children. Lynn, it's not worth it. Jason also tells Lynn it's time to give up their dream. The business is not worth it. I'd rather see her uh, just let it all go. We've worked so hard. Something had to be done to relieve the pressure. A little bit of hope and prayer. And I don't think she was going to be able to come back out of it. Just think about it. Lynn knows she has to do something to help herself. A friend recommends Lynn contact a local psychic and spiritual healer, Pam Faith. I went to Pam to strengthen my energy again so that I could protect myself. It had nothing to do with the restaurant. It was me. I needed some clarity. But Pam immediately zeroes in on the problems at Ryder's and asks Lynn to see the restaurant. She said that we needed to deal with the building before I could deal with me personally. Pam asks that her identity remains hidden. I wanted to go to her business to remove and release the bad spirits, the bad demons, so she can get her life back. Pam believes something dangerous is now haunting riders. I'm sensing several spirits and a demonic presence. I believe it's in the basement and it's extremely dangerous. The dark ones, the uh, negative ones, whatever terminology you want to use, their intention is to harm either physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. The bad ones want to break you down. I believe we were dealing with demons. We weren't dealing with human spirits. I need you to stay here in constant prayer. Pam will attempt to clear each room in the restaurant with prayer and by encouraging the entities present to move on. Oh, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. God the Father. When you're dealing with regular spirits, they need help, healing, in other words. So I, I will help them to heal and go to where they're supposed to go on the other side. Pam Faith does the clearing ritual in each of the rooms on the main floor of the restaurant. She will confront the demon in the basement alone. When you're dealing with demons, that always puts you at a risk for being harmed or being attacked. Just because I have gifts doesn't mean I can't get hurt. She plans to find the demon and attempt to remove it from the building with prayer. I could feel the demon in the basement. I ask God to get rid of it. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
For her own protection, Lynn stays upstairs praying. Pam senses the demon. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, rid this place of its evil, allow it to go. And give us this day our daily bread. Our Father, rid this place of its evil, allow it to go. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our Father, rid this place of its evil. And lead us not into temptation. Allow it to go. But deliver us from evil. I felt the major shift of energy in the basement once it was gone. What a difference in the room. You could breathe. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lynn? It's gone. Yes, it is. It's gone. It's hopefully for good, but there's no way to know for sure. When she was done with the entire building, immediately, oh, I'm sorry. I felt like I could breathe. It looked brighter. It was as if I was walking into the building for the first time. It was nothing that I had ever felt. I was almost instantaneously at ease. Kurt Knapp and his team hope Lynn's paranormal troubles are over, but they fear the lack of activity in the restaurant is only temporary. I don't think the haunting is over at Ryder's at all. I think that there probably will always be some type of paranormal activity there. For Lynn, the experience has brought her closer to her family and made her a stronger person. I do feel that I'm stronger. It strengthened my belief in God uh, and my religion and my faith. After going through what I've been through, you know, um, I can deal with it. It's only life. I think she's a better and stronger person now than she was when this all started. Once you deal with that type of entity, and especially a demonic force, there's always a way for them to get back in. I know that I will have to protect myself and my family the rest of my life. They don't forget your names. They don't forget who you are. <laughs>